here we are on the 15th of February 2013 and we're at, it's Rex Addison uh, in his studio at Mount Cosby. Um, we have to say who you are. Oh. Nina. <laughs> <laughs> Nina Jose. Mm -hmm. And Robert with the help without asking the questions. Yeah. Um, the first question is to do with your architecture studies. What qualifications did you gain and from which institution? Uh, I went uh, from 65 to 70 um, at the University of Queensland at a time when it was three years full time and three years part time. So you work, um, worked in offices in the last three years mm -hmm. and went to the university at nine. Mm -hmm. um, and then we, um, a group of four of us drove overland to England in 1971 when you could. And I did a postgraduate year at the AA, mm -hmm. uh, 71 to yeah. Postgraduate in, uh, in what? Architecture. Postgraduate. Yeah, yeah. It was a graduate diploma. Mm -hmm. um, that's what it was called. So that's the that's the only formal education. Mm -hmm. So I think. Oh well. I think I, I I think the UQ course when it was three years full time and three years part time, it it, it was happily a very good resolution. Mm -hmm. I don't I don't like five years full time. I don't I think the last two I think there's something called uh, there's something to say for a design immersion in the first three years but I think doing bigger and bigger projects in a vacuum in the last two years mm -hmm. is pretty silly and and, and uh, I think that um, working in real offices where you actually understood how um, the other consultants worked with you to produce buildings was much uh, better form of education than the kids get now. I, th I think there's um, there's a there, there's a lot to be said for for post grad research and uh, and stuff. But the last two years, I, I, I think it's. I mean, the French have it right, don't they? They, uh, they haven't got it. Mm. They, they've got it separate from a university system, whereas mm. architecture is considered like science or something mm. else as as, as as academically significant. And I think it's really a working. Mm thing rather than a mm. um, well, I know some people make their livings out of metaphors but uh, <laughs> 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 there's, there's, a, there's a story I'm fond of about a, a, a French a young bureaucrat who, who, who has a practical solution to the bureaucracy's problem and brings it to his senior officer and he says oh yes that's all very well in practice but it'll never work in theory and it points up the the problem I, I mean architecture doesn't isn't just an increasingly bigger and bigger metaphor it's it's really um assisted by understanding the the, te the team of people you work with mm -hmm. to produce the end result Anyway, I, I think it was quite a good three year full time, three year mm. part time. The drawback being that in the last three years, some of the some of my fellow students immediately took on the personas of the offices they were in, even if they were dre dead dreary and dull. So that they'd come in and instead of being a Bruce Gardner project, it was a Queensland Railways project or something. You know, mm. it, it, it was. I was staggered at how quickly they took on the low standards of some. Uh, I mean, I don't mean to say um, <laughs> mm -hmm. I shouldn't say that about Bruce. Uh, I mean, plenty of others in the, in the year, but but um, I, I was surprised at how quickly they took on mm -hmm. the fairly low standards that I thought were around in the offices. Mm -hmm. And the people who taught you, oh, Ian Cinema was the best. Mm -hmm. You remember. Ian Cinema was the best. Yes. Now, why? Oh, because he was sharp intellectually <laughs> and still is. Um, Bill Carr was intimidating. Why? Uh, because he was classroom. He was, he, he was an, one of those, you're too young to know, but he's one of those Australians who was still um, beholden to the uh, British upper class system mm -hmm. and um, he, he just made it his duty to, to make us feel unsettled about our prior life our mm -hmm. suburban life our bourgeois life 
and and um, just um, was very scornful of we had nothing to bring to the party we had everything to learn you know and, and it was very it was a nasty piece of work unless you came from the upper classes of Brisbane society mm -hmm. and certain people did and did well because of it whereas my parents were working class mm -hmm. and and, and um, you know and I didn't know what pate de foie gras was and, <laughs> And, and that was apparently significant, you know. I mean, it's silly to think yes. of it now, but 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 he was he was in the Royal Navy during the war rather than the Australian Navy, and he couldn't stand the sound of people talking in Australia. And it w it was just a real cultural cringe. Really? Yeah. And what about his um, his uh, didactic techniques? We heard that he had some uh, odd opinions on how to teach. Oh well, he was lazy. Mm. And he, he'd go for sabbatical and come back a year later with shots of his holiday on the Riviera and stuff. You know, that was just, he, he just swanned around. In a, in a, he came from inherited wealth mm -hmm. and he didn't bring any rigour. I mean, he, he, he knew certain things, but it was all wrapped up in class consciousness that I think was quite destructive. Mm -hmm. I mean, you'll get other opinions from people like Don, but Don came from the upper reaches of Queensland society and I didn't. Um, anyway, Ian Cinnamon was good. Pat Moroni was good. Mm -hmm. Pat Moroni was a, a, a contemporary of Ian Cinnamon's and he'd been a working architect. Uh, um, um, and, and so um, I, I thought he was good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think he went on to be a sculptor. Yeah. Yeah. And gave architecture away. Probably. I haven't seen Pat for years. He lives just down the road from Greg Bamford. Mm -hmm. But I haven't. Uh, yeah. And what were they teaching? What was Ian Cinnamon teaching? Pat His, uh, uh, well, n Pat took us in, in, in fifth year in, just for studio. Mm -hmm. um, he, he didn't give us any formal lectures. He just took us for, for design projects. Yep. But he brought a sort of working um, ability to it that Bill Carr couldn't. And, you know, various imports into the department were pretty dull. You know, Bill Gregg and Hamish Murison were pretty dull teachers. And, and um, uh, Ian Cinnamon w uh, uh, was widely read and and and, and lectured us in in history, ancient history. Mm -hmm. uh, Modern uh, history too. Not so. Uh, not that I remember. Did anyone? Yeah, Prof Cummings. That was quite interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, we, uh, the professor then yeah. was um, Robert Cummings, mm -hmm. and um, he he he. he um, one of the uh, <coughs> the Americans were here during the Second World War, and and uh, one of the people on on MacArthur's staff was um, uh, Edgar Kaufman, who who was um, the son of um, Kaufman who who who'd built Falling Water. Mm -hmm. so, yes. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, so Robert Cummings became friendly with Kaufman, mm -hmm. young Kaufman. And, and stayed there in the 50s and showed us slides of, you know, <laughs> the guest <laughs> house of Falling Water. <laughs> and he had slides from Europe and he, uh, he had a, a penchant for um, a softer form of modernism. Um, Judoc was his pin-up boy. And uh, I think that was pretty pretty sharp, actually, mm -hmm. in, in retrospect. And he, he'd wander backwards and forwards in front of his slides and his shadow, his profile would be cast onto the onto slides, slides. <laughs> as, as he lectures. <laughs> it's like Hitchcock. <laughs> like Hitchcock. Very like Hitchcock. And uh, uh, they, were, they were good. You know, uh, uh, Prof Cummings would be caught up with dilemmas like, what do we do in the modern movement when we're supposed to build in glass and we might have a, a, a client who's a bank and wants to express security and how can we express security mm -hmm. with all this glass i mean no one gives that a second thought <laughs> <laughs> but, but you know it was a bit of a dilemma in his head and, and beyond frank lloyd wright were there and dudok were there any other modern no they're the things? most memorable mm -hmm. um carl langer lectures and, uh, uh, in town planning mm -hmm. and he'd he'd have um you know about him, I suppose. Mm. From yeah. Uh, well, what's your take on Carl? He's a very nice man. Mm. He failed nobody, <laughs> no matter how badly or how little. Uh, I mean, I think that 
people should have been a, 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 bit, a bit more um, respecting of mm. his largesse. Um, but I think they were, we were teenage boys for the most part. There were five women in my year mm. in, a, in a class of 55. Um, and, 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 you know, there was probably the general rabble going on and, and he didn't, he just kept talking. He didn't attend to any of the human frailties <laughs> before him. <laughs> he was a nice man. And he, he, he'd, he'd have, have um, illustrations from magazines from the 1930s mm. and 40s, I suppose. And they'd be ripped out of magazines and he'd put them in the epidioscope and throw them up on the wall and they'd be... Mm. And, and, and you got to learn about, you know... And which magazines were they? I don't know. Uh, they didn't have the headers on them. They were just old European magazines, often in German, I guess. Mm. Uh, they yeah. were showing French. buildings? Buildings or, or, or city mm -hmm. interventions, you know, and drawings. And I, I, one of the things I remember him saying was that uh, in competitions in Europe if you show shadows on your drawings you are excluded it was a rule that you couldn't distort you know you, you had to show yeah. w without uh, distortion or PR that what you, what, what you had on your mind mm -hmm. yes and so shadows Excluded. No storm clouds. No storm clouds. Nothing. <laughs> just just line drawings to show what you had in mind, mm -hmm. because all other things were deceptive. Mm. He used to show a lot of Camillo Cite mm -hmm. drawings. You know, it, it, it was all that sort of um, the spaces in the middle of European towns were shown positive, and the, and the buildings negative. Were you aware of his? actual design work in the building yes yes in private practice yes yes and dad worked on some things yeah. my father was a plasterer and he worked mm -hmm. on st peter's lutheran college uh chapel mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. and i'd go over there on site and, and see them and i thought you know he was sort of second to Birrell. I, I thought Birrell was much more interesting but i thought i could see that carl had qualities that mm. were, were, were interesting too um, what do you remember of Birrell? Birrell was teaching at No, no, I worked for him in fifth oh, year. Oh, you worked for him, okay. Uh, in, in fourth year I worked for Geoffrey Pye, in fifth year I worked for Jim Birrell, and in sixth year I worked for Conrad and Gargan. Mm -hmm. um, and what are your experiences working there, Geoffrey Pye's? Um, well, uh, I, I hawked my portfolio around a lot of offices. 50 or so, I suppose, and there was no work at the time, so I just... Uh, so this was what year? 68. 68. Yeah. And said, I, uh, I, went, uh, I had a reasonable discussion with Geoffrey, so I went around and said, um, you know, I don't require a, an income initially, so <laughs> how about I just sit in the room and see how it's done? And, and, and one, of the one, of, one of the things that I... Uh, I think... I, I mean, I don't want to... Uh, put Jeffrey down, but I think the thing I mainly learned in Jeffrey's office is how to talk on the phone. Uh, just how to talk, where mm -hmm. where your service fit into the mm -hmm. kaleidoscope of things that were going on mm -hmm. to make a building. Mm -hmm. Talking to engineers, talking to clients, talking, you know, we sat in the same room for a year and I heard everything he said on the phone, mm -hmm. apart from organising his trade library and dealing nicely with his Doberman pincer and <laughs> <laughs> who sat under my desk and farted a lot. <laughs> so how, how big was the office in those days? Right. The size right. of this room. Right. The, the si half, half the size of the studio. This is the old garage and this is my addition to it. Mm -hmm. and, and, and the room that Jeffrey and I sat in would have been probably smaller than this. Really? And was yeah. it in his home? Or? Yes. At New Farm. Right. So what were the projects he was working on when you were there? Uh, houses, Brisbane Realty, um, a, a commercial building in town. Um, and one of the things, uh, one of the, a couple of things he let me work on were a, a little, he was doing some sort of thesis for the, um, the valley businessmen and he, he wanted uh, concrete seats through the valley and, and, and um, I must have made a, a, a timber positive, which my father 
aren't made of plaster mold of, then we cast positives from that in plaster that it made. And I saw photographs of it recently. I've got rolls of drawings from, from that era. Mm -hmm. Jeffrey's sitting in front of me. Mm -hmm. and he also uh, let me do a, a pumping station, which is still in existence up at Noosa. It's got a little poured concrete roof. It was sort of Venturi-esque, which is quite unusual for Brisbane at that, at that time. <laughs> Kids get up on their skateboards now and ride on the roof. Um, but Jeffrey was game, uh, willing to have a go. I did a gate in the Brisbane Realty that I passed the other day. So okay. you consciously wanted to do a year with three different architects? No, that's no? just the way it turned out. Yes, I was yes. too poor by the end of then and I wanted to get a job and I, I asked him to put in a, a good word for me with, with um, Beryl and he did and I got the job mm -hmm. and Beryl paid very bad money <laughs> and, and I went from something like $20 a week and I asked him for raise every couple of months and we got worked up to $40 a week and his work wasn't good at that stage you're recording this I guess I should, should say I mean I, I'm a big fan of Jim's and, I, and I've printed the, I, 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 I gave a little address with Don Watson which introduced him when he got the gold medal uh -huh. um, uh, but you know his work he, his best work was done in running two small bureaucracies the um, um, Brisbane City Council he was Brisbane City Council architect and then university architect when I, I worked for him he was trying to get oh you don't have to read it his now private, but, uh, office, uh, private work mm. and uh, I think the standard of work went down and I complained about it at the end of the year and um, we parted company mm. That was when uh, Richard Stringer was there as well? No, he'd left by then. He had left. Philip then. Conn was there. Mm -hmm. I was working on one of Philip's projects, mm -hmm. knocking down a dog's house to build crappy yeah, crappy townhouses. And I said, This is this is no good and Beryl said, You paid you paid to draw, not think. <laughs> it was yeah. as crude as that. Mm -hmm. I said, Not on this one. <laughs> <laughs> But I mean, I'm st I, I, I still think his early work was mm -hmm. was was good because Beryl was very uh, borrowed a lot of, of, of ideas. But unlike a lot of Brisbane practices where they get watered down, he improved them. I mean, I think the, the stairs on the end of JD Story are better than anything Corb's done. Mm. <laughs> and was that because of Jim's input? No, or that he I don't know. Team around him? He had a great team. Laurie yeah. Cully was great. Laurie was there, but, but Laurie was drinking pretty heavily by then. Uh, I, I worked in Sydney years later and Laurie came for a job and he was a pretty sad figure. But uh, I mean, Don was there. Uh, yeah, yeah Bruce, Bruce Goodson, Bruce Goodson was, was, the, well, was hugely influential in the building of the agriculture building. Mm. He was running that. Um, <coughs> Don's always a, a bit of a gadfly on all these things. Don, Don, Don had, um, before I got there, worked on some halls of residence up in PNG that are pretty interesting. Mm -hmm. mm. So he was already in PNG. No, no. He, oh, Bill, uh, Beryl was. Yeah. yeah. Um, but that year, nice no, sixty-nine. I mean. At the start of this, mm -hmm. I, uh, I said uh, I worked in Jim Birrell's office as a fifth year architecture student in 1969. I saw Neil Armstrong walk on the moon in Jim's office. That's more or less the way I felt when I got the job there. Because <laughs> <laughs> he was a big hero. Yeah. Uh, and and um, we worked on Steamships Hotel for most of the year and, and it never went ahead. It was a, a, a hotel in Moresby. Mm. Did Graham Davis work on that too? No, not that I'm aware of. Oh, okay. Um, uh, so then your um, your third experience with uh, Conrad and Garbett. Um, that, uh, well, I, I, I touch on that, and I was desperately trying to find some old Conrad and Garbett drawings that I used in that talk, and mm. I can't remember whether I used them as slides or whether I got them scanned and put on a disc. MacArthur's away this week, so I haven't been able to verify it. Um, but I used a Keith Frost drawing because I, I felt you were maybe pegging him a little high, and I'd like to bring it down <laughs> a bit. Uh, hey, I, I, you know, I did a scheme. I talk about it in there. Um, uh, he was a he, he was doing a house up at Point Cartwright, and he had this project to do um, uh, Centaur House. 
in, in um, uh, up on Wickham Terrace and the zoning of the land was 50% residential, 50% commercial mm -hmm. and so I had some open space down below and some accommodation for the nurses up above and so it took on a sort of, it was very Corbusian, it was, I, I did it in a day and I did a quick perspective which is, uh, which I could do because Don and I were quite competitive in Birrell's office. He was always on the make and we were always producing schemes quickly for him. And so it was sort of good training in a flashy sort of way mm -hmm. to do it. So I did it for Frost while he was all out of the office for the day. And he came back. He didn't change any of the planning that said a building couldn't look like this because I, I'd expressed it in a cellular way up the top and with Breeze Soler down b below because it was looking west mm -hmm. uh, across to Albert Park. Uh, and it was, ob you know, obviously a, a La Tourette type um, mm -hmm. scheme. And, and uh, he laid his butter paper over it and, and, and drew over my perspective and changed all the window treatment to all coffered windows all the way down. And that's because the building had to have unity. And I, I, I just used it in that introduction to show how it would have would have got you know full marks at, at Birrell's and he would have taken it to the uh, mm -hmm. client but I, I think he was so far ahead of the pack in Brisbane mm -hmm. that it didn't happen anywhere else. So where did um, where did Keith Frost study? I've no idea. He, I mean was he a Brisbane person or not? Or Don't know. Yeah. I, I only worked for him a, a, a short period when I first got there and then they sent at, at Needham House and then they sent me across the road to the old the old building and I worked out in the veranda with Lindy and Rob Akers and Wilf and Beryl and Charlie Hammond Hamilton was sick that year. And Lou Haley had storm around and you spoke with him. I thought he was I thought he was a bit of a bully. Really? Hmm. Hmm. Doesn't come ac come across like that. No, anymore. he's ninety now. Mm. Yeah, it's softened mm. down. So mm. perhaps he's entered better years. Mm. But um and what other projects were going on at the office at the time that you were there? Okay. Conrad and I, they were finishing the SGIO building, mm -hmm. which is now called something else. Isn't it? Suncorp? Suncorp. Well, it's no longer that even. Yes. Yeah. Well, I, uh, uh, <laughs> I was working on the revolving restaurant <laughs> at the top. Of, <laughs> I, couldn't, uh, I couldn't believe how much. There was a guy called John Parnell in there that was just terrible to work with. And uh, I couldn't believe how many materials and things I was proposing to use. And I had to do a display board of all their materials. This is the fit out of the restaurant. Yeah. 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 And I, I thought the only way to homogenize the, the, these all, you know, 30 different mil, mil, uh, materials with different textures and glitter, glitter and stuff was to put them all in slightly milky plastic bags. So I, I put them all in slightly milky plastic bags and hung them on hooks. I got into trouble for this. <laughs> they, did, they wouldn't trust me to do anything. I, I was just allowed to draw perspectives and greeting cards and things. I don't remember doing anything meaningful there, but I did draw a good wage. Yeah. And, and <laughs> that was the reason why you went there, <laughs> primarily. I thought Birrell's work was, was crook, and I didn't see how anyone else's work was any, 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 any worse. And, and I thought there'd be an opportunity to work there, and maybe if I'd worked with Duncan McPhee, it might have been okay. But I, I was in a pretty, you know, Ron Hawkins was out in the veranda. It was all pretty gung ho. And, and there were no other places you wanted to go to at the time, Robin Gibson's office, or in no, uh, no, um, uh, hey, can you be sued for? <laughs> <laughs> we can sue it. <laughs> No, well, I mean, I thought he was disciplined, but I thought he was limited. Mm. Mm. Well, there were other practices around that you mm. probably approved of, but, but they'd be small. I needed money. Yeah, mm. and Pat Moroni would have been oh, the yeah, person yeah. to work for. I, 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 I tried to work for John Larkin. I, I went to 40 offices or 50 mm. uh, before I went to work a year for Jeffrey. You know, it's mm. not as if I didn't try anywhere else. Yeah. Uh, but by, by uh, you know, after fourth year and fifth year of not getting much money, if any, mm -hmm. I just needed it because we were going overseas, mm. and I didn't see that. I, I, I thought there'd be an opportunity to do something, and indeed there was in Conrad and Gargan. They just didn't want to listen to you. They didn't like what you did. Mm. So, so, what did you think of what they were doing? I mean, their their 
I thought it was un. Two, two I thought projects. it didn't have any rigor. The two big projects were the Commonwealth Bank yeah. and the STIO building. Yeah. And I mean, do you think? What do you think of those projects? Oh, I think they're pretty. Um, I don't think highly of them. Um, I, I, I find it difficult to remember the Commonwealth Bank. Uh, it was it was more interesting than the SGIO. They lost the they lost a few workmen on the SGIO because it was a steel building with shear connectors, and they were pouring slabs on top. Mm -hmm. Shear connectors were like bolts are sticking out of the top of the steel frame. And the guys would just trip on them and fall off. <laughs> mm. I seem to remember they um, they sort of thought there was a rule of thumb for every million the building cost you'd lose a person. In a construction <laughs> like that, so well, it was uh, all went with the game. With yeah, the territory. I suppose I suppose you wouldn't lose them now because they'd all have harnesses on. But mm -hmm. uh, they, you know, in those days they they didn't. Um, I thought the the, the planning was was expedient on them. Uh, you know, at, at the time, bigger buildings. You, you know, I can remember thinking about Louis Kahn's ideas about served and servant spaces and mm -hmm. and and. Um, I mean, um, Conrad and Gargett's buildings, if that's the shape of the site, that'll be the shape of the building, and then the toilets might be here, and the lift might be here, and, and everything was just jammed into the, the rectangle, whereas it, 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 there wouldn't be an articulation or an idea about that's all right. the hierarchy of things. But in the case of the SGIO, the, the big idea was to turn the... 45 degrees. Yeah. Now, what did you think of that? I don't think I gave it a great deal of thought. Mm. Mm. I, I'm sorry, I can't think of anything meaningful to say about it. I, su I suppose it was an issue. Did, did that? Uh, uh, um, the SGIO building, I if I'm correct, um, north is probably on one of the short blank sides, is it? I would have thought. This look. This face looks. The look, end, but I've this face looks down into the city square, doesn't it? Yeah. Uh, and, and, and if that's the city square, um, I think that's looking northeast. The the main main grid of Brisbane is running northeast. Mm, it's it's half Something. and half. It's yeah. north. So north is out there. Oh well, may, maybe it's okay. I don't know. Was I it was I it rotated for that reason? I think so. Yeah. yeah. Um, but I mean, there's there's another. You, you're balancing that against what the rest of the city's doing and whether you need to relate to anything there. It was also about casting shadows in the square, I think. Okay. And also in deference to that church <coughs> and all of that that was next door to it. Did it help in, in relating to the church? I mean, I think, I, I think it does, uh, even if it's on the, on the grid, it, 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 it does meet the street with a, yeah. with a face, doesn't it? The, the, the theatre enters off there. And the theatre they had to provide because they took out the Albert Hall. Yeah. So they had to reproduce that facility. Somehow. Which I went to in, my, in high school. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> Just to see Hamlet or something. <laughs> anyway, we're drifting off so, the site. But by final year, you had decided that you wanted to go overseas to study at the A. No, I didn't know I was going to study at the A. We just wanted to get well, out. I mean, it was such a long time. Six years is so long. And, and, and Australia is so far away from everywhere mm. that we all wanted to clear out. I mean, I, I tried to le leave UQ um, during uh, about fifth year and, and finish at Sydney, but um, making inquiries, um, you had to complete at least half your course at that university mm. to gain a degree from that university. So you couldn't try go between you. You know, you, you're at a point where I'm not going to increase. <laughs> I'm going to go <laughs> even more years. And why so did you want to go to Sydney? Just to get another experience? Susan got a job there. Oh. We, we'd met by that stage. She got a job with AAP Reuters down there. And I thought, oh, well, I'll, I'll finish down there. And, um, but it was not for... Because you thought they were doing better architecture down there. No, uh, no. But I thought Sydney might be more exciting. Mm -hmm. Or it would be nice to be exposed to a different city. We all thought it was pretty racy down there, didn't we? Yeah. Well, it was yeah. compared to us. Compared to us, it was very suburban mm. up here. I mean, we used to go 
for trips. Yeah, we, uh, the, the, there'd be conventions. Uh, each each year during the student life, there were architectural conventions. So in my mm -hmm. first year, I drew, and drove with three other guys down to Melbourne. And then in fifth year, uh, we drove down to Sydney. Um, so who was speaking at the convention in Melbourne? No one of note, but the one in Sydney had Buckminster Fuller. Mm -hmm. um, And the one in, in third year, we had the convention in Brisbane and Gio Ponti spoke mm -hmm. and Jim Birrell was at that, mm -hmm. um, spoke at that. And, and, and an English con man called Tony Gulliam. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Twice con man? <laughs> yeah, he was trading on the shirt tails of Archie Graham, and, but he wasn't in their group and, you know, he mm -hmm. was just probably some spiv from the AA. Mm -hmm. but and what, what else do you remember from this? Conference, from the student conference because there you were building geodesic domes in the main square do you no do you not me um in the great court uh, yeah. yeah main square yeah. Great court. Mm, no i don't the geodesic domes that must have been some other year yeah i don't know which year yeah i may have happened okay but um my memory of buckminster fuller though was in perth maybe he spoke in sydney as well i don't remember that. I'm pretty sure he came to Sydney and I heard Ian Mackay speak which uh, and I thought his work was good and after I'd been two years away I came back and worked for Ian Mackay in Sydney. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm. So you said there were 55 students in your year? Yeah. Were there any that stood out do you remember? Uh, <laughs> well Bob was a QUT so uh, he's exempt from it. Uh, it was a QIT then, yeah. Yeah. Um, Russell Hall's the standout other person in my year, I think. Mm. <laughs> Memorable. Mm. <laughs> and we were close friends from first year, so mm. and we're still friends. Mm. Don was a year ahead of me, mm -hmm. and he, he, he's, he, he sets the bar pretty high for us all, So um, Don Watson. Mm -hmm. um, and I worked with him at Birrell's. That was a nice thing. We could break down those sort of, you know, year yes. things if you're working in the same office. And in and, and, and sixth year, I worked with Lindy Crofts, who was in my year. Um, not that she's, she's not all that interested in architecture. She's more interested in photography these days. But, mm. you know, the contemporaries you work with. Uh. <coughs> well, um, the, the time at the yeah. AA... Uh, Yeah. Well, well, tell us about the trip across yeah. Europe. I mean, or across the world. I mean, yeah. <laughs> to Europe. Well, we 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 bought a combi van in in Singapore. Four of us were going to go. It was going to be five. It was going to be um, Susan. I had married by that stage, uh, and a friend of hers, Liz Daly, was going to go with us, but she pulled out. So it ended up with Don Watson, and Susan, and I, and Ian Cinnamon, who was. Uh, the best lecturer. How come he went? <laughs> He's a complex person, <laughs> but he was, he was in the pro his first marriage was in the process of breaking down at that stage, and he was um, a father of five, oh. but, but he had a sabbatical year, and he heard that we were going, and so he cast his lot in with us. <laughs> so he didn't really make a distinction between professor student or lecturer student when it was not a problem. Well, we were graduates by that stage, so there wasn't anything, he, you know. It, it, it's th I, I thought it was a bit stiff at the start, but we were just pals at the end. Mm -hmm. it, 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 was, it, was, uh, it was a bit tricky at the start, I think. Mm -hmm. but And during your trip, were there uh, buildings or places that you sought out, sought out to visit or did oh, you? Oh, sure. We saw, we saw all the Khan things in Ahmedabad mm -hmm. and all the, all the court things in Chandigarh and, uh, um, and, and just India besides mm -hmm. and then um, Pakistan. Mm -hmm. um, Doxiades. Sorry? Doxiades? No. Um, he was a figure around. He used to grow tomatoes in Brisbane. 
What? He was a tomato grower in Brisbane. Did you know that? I didn't. Yeah. <laughs> At Redland Bay. <laughs> Are you sure? <laughs> I'm pretty sure, yeah. I don't know whether he invented this, uh, Brisbane's co contribution to tom the world tomatoes, the stackable tomato. <laughs> <laughs> cube. <laughs> well, you know, tough and tasteless, but mm. stacks high. Um, yeah, I th yeah, I could check on that. But mm. I think he had a, a period where he was a Greek migrant, and then he went back to yeah. Athens and achieved a world reputation. Mm. Uh, but I didn't see any of his work. Have I missed some in India or something? Have I? I think Pakistan and those uh, that move further up to north or south west of India. Yeah. Well, sorry. Uh, um, I mean, all the Islamic buildings in, in um, Afgan Afghanistan, Iran, Iraq, Syria, Lebanon, that's mm -hmm. where we drove. Mm -hmm. um, w we had uh, gu uh, gu guides of uh, ancient sites. I mean, Ian was encyclopedic about... Um, Forgotten the name of it, but the ancient Assyrian mm -hmm. stuff. There was a an arch at Tessaphon and and, and and some early Assyrian stuff. Um, but all the all, all the Greek and Roman sites across. Mm -hmm. We had si uh, maps for those. And we got into ruin. <laughs> <laughs> allergy. I, if I saw another ruin, a crusader <laughs> castle or, or Doric Templar, I'd throw up. <laughs> yeah, well, I can imagine. Did yeah. you see the Parthenon? Oh, yeah. Mm. yeah. So it came through. But, but 20 other things besides. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, saw the um, Crack the Chevalier, the Crusader castle where um, Mick Kennedy's um, father in law died. He fell over the wall. Yeah, hmm? yeah. Alison's Al first. Uh, Alison's father. Yes. Died at Crack the Chevalier. Yeah. Obscure bit of knowledge. Yeah. Um, um, what about the cog things in France? I mean. The yes, but my camera. Uh, oh, we, we went right across the world, without much of a problem. And the first day in England, the, the uh, combi van was broken into and our camera was stolen. Yeah. And uh, my, my <laughs> photographs of Maison Joie <laughs> are in the stolen camera. Oh. Mm. But uh, we, we saw La Tourette and Rochon and, and, and uh, Marseille. And, you know. mm. and did you also go uh, to Scandinavia? No. Mm. Uh, no, we, we drove across. Uh, we got into uh, we, a little bit into France. We drove down to Barcelona. Mm -hmm. Uh, and saw the Gaudi mm -hmm. buildings, and, and um, then drove across France and into um, England for mm -hmm. six months. And yeah, and, uh, and I didn't know what to do there. I, I worked for a while uh, in, in a not very interesting firm, and and then. Um, do you remember which firm you worked at? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to know. It doesn't matter. Schlock, yeah. schlock, and schlock. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, I worked twice. In, uh, I, I worked as an architect twice in Britain. The first time to get fees to go to the AA, although I applied for a bursary and I got it, which halved the fees. Mm -hmm. um, and then at the end, uh, after I finished, I worked for fares to come home. So I worked for fees and fares. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but you didn't drive back. <laughs> no, we flew back. <laughs> God no. Um, I can remember you arriving. You didn't look too uh, healthy. No, at that no. Stage. We, 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 uh, Alison remembers most indelibly. She said we had this spacey sort of look, and there's one photograph from that period hmm. where we, yeah, we were just we'd been in a little capsule, the four of us, for six months, mm -hmm. and we were a bit spacey, I think. Of a we, got, <laughs> we, we got into England. I can remember having milk delivered to the van. We were still living in the van, but the, getting the milkman to deliver milk. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, uh, I think I told you to go and park outside Hague's place, so at yeah. least you could use the loo. <laughs> no, we used the loo in the tube. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Mm. Uh, so had you... What made you decide to study at the AA? Because you 
I didn't know what else to do really um, I, I think it, it, it was a hasty decision I mean we, we used to AD was an interesting magazine at the time and, and um, it seemed like the sort of um, learning institution equivalent of what was being discussed in that magazine at the time but you know in retrospect I would have been happier in an American school I think yeah. well, well I think it, it, it's hard for you to understand that the conversation at the time was maybe the answer wasn't a building and, and I think I was too young to say well actually I'm interested in buildings mm. you know it just seemed so uncool to be interested in buildings and who was teaching at the A when you were there? Oh, the archaeogram Peter Cook, Peter Cook was there, yeah. but um, Dennis Crompton, Ron Heron took my my graduate school option. Paul Oliver ran the ran the thing, and he's encyclopedic about everything. He writes books about jazz and blues and shelter, and I mean, you just walk into a room and he'd give a, a one hour seminar on anything. This object here, yeah. just talk. <laughs> <laughs> so you, you you gain by knowing that people like that are out there and you didn't get that experience in Australia very often no uh, um, the most indelible thing I saw at the AA while I was there um, was that Richard Rogers had won the the project to do uh, Centre Pompidou mm -hmm. uh, which is called Plateau Beaubourg then I think yeah. um, it was in uh, uh, Les the um, yeah. suburbs, and, and at the at the um, at the same time in London, they were think, thinking of doing major developments in Covent Garden, which is a similar yeah. uh, area to Les in Paris, old market mm -hmm. centre of the city. And so, half the school thought Richard Rogers uh, was God, and the other half thought he was a, uh, the devil because he was ripping the heart out of an ancient city. Mm. And so you go to a lecture that he gave about winning this, and it's a, it was the sort of equivalent of, it's like an archigram building getting built, you know. Mm. And um, I mean, Renzo Piano was part of this too. That's right. And he, he wasn't a very big name at the time, but he became big and, mm. you know. But, <coughs> but he gave a lecture uh, and and the, and the room was packed at the AA, yeah. and half the people were adoring and half were jeering and and wanting mm. to throw stuff at him. And I thought, well, that's a pretty interesting cultural climate to, you know, wh yeah. whatever he produced, he, he's doing it in a pretty pretty critical uh, yeah. climate, and, and, and things just aren't criticised in Australia. I mean, famously, Harry Seidler took a cartoonist to court for 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 uh, a cartoon about one of his buildings. He lost, but it, 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 it's, it's indicative of, yeah. of um, you know, the cartoonist just, just drew a cube. And there was a hole here, and people were delivering food there, and there was a hole here, and, and people were coming with shovels to collect shit here. And it was called Harry Seidler's Home for the Aged, or something like that. And he took the the, the cartoonist uh, Cox, is it? Yeah. Um, uh, to court and uh, lost. Um, but uh, but it is indicative that we we, we don't have a, a, a critical mass of people here. So the place is too small to, to, to engage in that sort of vitriolic debate about mm -hmm. what buildings might be like, and they'd be a bit better if we did have a bit more vitri vitriol flowing around. Yeah. Not that I'm very combative, but yeah. uh, just uh, that was the most memorable thing that happened at the school, apart from one of the lectures. I mean, there were lectures on every day about... Uh, I mean, there were so many people coming. The day Louis Kahn ca came to the school, I was just a bit tired, so I didn't go in. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. he was found. He was found dead in a lavatory in Penn Central Station about a year later. I mean, I'm just that's the worst thing I did. I should have gone in to see. Kyle. And who else did come did lecture at, at the AA? Um, just people from all around the world because London's fairly central. Mm. And I remember, I, I, 
I, I suppose there are other big names. I just can't remember. I just well, didn't go to the jury. I mean, no, he wasn't there in my time. Um, but he, I mean, he's been there, of course, but not in my time. But um, I remember someone coming in from South America, and they actually bought what are those big spiky animals, armadillos. Yes, they? no, they have armadillos. No, they have armor. they have armor, don't they? But yes. this one has long spiky quills. Oh. And he he had it with him. <laughs> And he's giving this lecture, and this animal's walking around the room, and and the and the room's pretty full, but people are just parted <laughs> <laughs> as this animal's just sort of making its way through. <laughs> that was that was the bit uh, the most memorable. Well, apart from um, Rogers' thing. Mm. In uh, in that publication, you also mentioned that you were influenced by he Hexberger. Hertzberger. Hertzberger, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, he didn't. He, he didn't, didn't lecture there. No. But how how did you you only learn about Hertzberger's work when you were in London, or you knew no. about it? Magazine. Mm. Yeah. Um. Uh, Hertzberger, um, Sterling, who we're all aware of. Uh, mm. Um. And I, I saw Gino Valli's work on the way over in Italy, and I liked I liked it. Mm -hmm. Um. I've never read anything. Uh, I keep meaning to get a book on Gino Valley. I suppose he's dead now. Uh, I've never read anything theoretical about his work, but I, I imagined I knew what he was on about. Mm -hmm. We saw one of his buildings in the middle of... He, he works around a little town in the north of Italy called Udine. Mm -hmm. I think, is that the correct mm -hmm. pronunciation? Mm -hmm. And um, we, we went to one of them. I didn't know of it before there, but just driving into the town, it was obvious this was a Gino Valley building. It was just beautiful sitting in that town. It's just scaled to the place perfectly. Mm. And uh, mm. and we saw his big uh, industrial building at Port mm -hmm. um which I still think is fantastic. Um, and did you look up Ponty because you... No, I wasn't all that interested. Um, I mean, we saw the Forelli building. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we went to... Is it Milan? No, Milan. it's Milan. No, no. Milan. Milan, yes. Uh, but we saw Ponty buildings in Baghdad. <laughs> <laughs> I saw a Utsun in in Tehran. Uh, he did a bank in Tehran. Um, we got in momentarily before the security guard shuffled us. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and well, you didn't think about staying in London after you finished this one year at the AA. No, no. Unlike you, I, I wasn't in love with it. I, f I, I, I could cope with the, the weather and the cold. I couldn't cope with the dark. Mm. A and going to work in the dark and coming home in the dark, I thought was just the most miserable life mm. on earth. And I just think growing up in a place like this, it, it, uh, it was more than... Um, What's the word? Um, it was a visceral reaction mm. to 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 it. I just uh, I saw I, I can remember seeing a, a corny movie at, uh, while I was over there called Cisco Pike. It had Chris Christopherson in, mm. and it was all set in Los Angeles. And I was just zooming around Venice and and stuff, and it all seemed like home. <laughs> and I just wanted to go, <laughs> go somewhere <laughs> like that. <laughs> I could have gone to LA, but but I came home. Mm. But. But it was it, 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 it's good when you're overseas. Um, it, it helps to crystallise what you like about mm. where you come from. Mm. You must be going through it, mm. um, <laughs> and and you see it in a clearer light when you're away from it. Yeah, I think my reaction is the opposite. I see what I don't like about it. Well, yeah, or well maybe I should have seen more of it because I saw I saw possibilities back here that I think were pretty hard to achieve. Um, I thought there was a, a, a way of doing things that we could. I mean, uh, eventually, I suppose. I I, I think that <coughs> um, vernacular is generally associated with old buildings, uh, but I think actually uh, we should be working on the on the leading edge of vernacular, mm -hmm. and 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 um, architecture gets. Uh, th th there's a subject called design where people all put smocks on and think they're geniuses and and, 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 uh, uh, and, and, and it, it just goes off into a wanky sort of world and, and, and I think that um, we should be uh, 
most of my work has been on the sort of I didn't see it at first but I mean I, I think it's just taking a, a trying to take that conversation further forward and, and, and we so this is a regional conversation oh, well that's what it was called back in the 80s and mm. I mean I'm tired with that brush I suppose forever but uh, most provincial towns like Brisbane uh, um, you know I can remember uh, uh, when uh, uh, and you will remember this um, there was a fellow in, in Conrad and Garg called Graham Thedicke whom you've probably interviewed um, who did a little copy of a Frank Lloyd Wright chapel um, for the bishops born up in Hamilton and I can remember John Dalton used to write the, the copy for, for that cross-section magazine mm, yep. and he, he, he wrote in it um, I can remember word for word when most buildings in Australia come second or third hand from overseas can we complain when someone dips a little closer to the source and I thought that was pretty pretty much on the money yeah. um, I do think it's a copy and I think I think Eddie Oribin's work is more interesting than, than that mm -hmm. because the, the, the Thedicke thing is more or less a copy although it's, it's roof is not nearly as complex I've been to the real building and, and, and uh, it's it's a different kettle of fish but but, but um, uh, Eddie Oribin's work which we'll get on to up mm -hmm. in North Queensland it, it, it is much more inventive in his own way and takes a lot of cues from Wright's work but I think my, uh, mainly in provincial towns like Brisbane, uh, things get watered down. Mm -hmm. um, whereas you could have actually taken, uh, we, 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 um, I don't know, I, I can barely open my eyes when I drive into Brisbane these days. Whereas uh, it, was, it was much more obvious when you drove in there that there was a good building tradition and it's sort of gone nowhere. Yeah. Uh, and I thought that could have been taken further and, uh, and it just isn't because we're, we're too intimidated by the rest of the world. Hmm. Well, yeah. when this brings us to when you start <laughs> practising. <laughs> Don't want a, a, a real downer. Well, you, you decided to practise. Uh, yeah, but, uh, but I think, yeah, but the important thing that you haven't touched on is that when I came back from England, mm -hmm. I, I worked for Geoffrey again, mm -hmm. and then I worked for Goods of Baker Wild for four years, and that was the best working experience I'd had. Mm -hmm. Of all those offices, that was by far the best working experience because they, they were a, a traditional firm, mm -hmm. and Bill Goodsir's son, Bruce, had, uh, had, who'd worked for Jim Birrell mm -hmm. but, uh, uh, before me, had got back into his father's firm and he was stirring the place up so it was easy for me to come in and 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 make initiative uh, have initiatives that weren't thrown out the window mm -hmm. the old boys were told to pay attention and and help and and, and it was terrific it was a real learning experience uh, I, um uh, Bruce, Bruce was on, uh, on a set of hospitals and I, I worked on, on some buildings up in Papua New Guinea mm -hmm. and I had the older partner, uh, Bill, Bill Goodser was his father but, but Ken Baker was, was the other older partner and I, I worked with him and Ken had all the technical expertise in the world mm -hmm. and he'd just bring it to bear helping you to resolve what the building could be and because it, unlike Jeffrey's office or Beryl's office which were entrepreneurial and things lots of things didn't go ahead when I worked for Jeffrey the second time I think I worked on about 20 projects one of which went ahead yeah yeah it's just all pie in the sky stuff you know that doesn't doesn't happen mm -hmm. and uh, whereas a uh, good says clients are come and they get a brief and they do sketch plans and they do working drawings and you go out on site and then clients are come and they Mm -hmm. You know, and the, it was like waves rolling into the shore, and and, and, and it was really calm, ordered, organised place where I could uh, get things done. And, and the, I, I did uh, a halls, halls of residence up in Papua New Guinea in 1975, 74, 75, mm -hmm. um, which are still there. And, 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 and the Papua New Guinea, and I, I run into people who. who, who Went to, went to university and lived there and think fondly of them mm -hmm. and they're in good shape and you know and, and Ken uh, Ken Baker wrote the spec for it and, and gave me a lot of a, a lot of advice on the way and he said it was the most complicated timber space he'd ever written and I think in in all my buildings it's probably the simplest <laughs> 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 and how, how was 
you have to reorganize because everybody got to work on a particular project because you said we did the uh, Bruce and I were, were stirring up uh, we're, 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 we're doing most of the design work right. and, and, and bringing it into documentation it wasn't just to put a smock on and, and, and think of something uh, and, and and people like Ken Baker or, or specifically Ken in my case were, were helping me to helping make it make up for my technical deficiencies and giving me a, an education basically mm -hmm. Ken gave me an education but it was only the three senior partners and then you and uh no, there were lots of other people. Okay. We were directing other people, mm. but uh, Bruce and I were the major design mm. yeah, pushers in there at the time. Mm. Just before you left Jeffrey, I was there for a short yeah. time, and you and I went out to the tower yeah. at the U at UQ. I've seen the buildings we were working on. I, uh, I've got them in rolls out here. The, um, I mean, that was the one bit job that went ahead, the caravan park, and they were real spivs. They were. <laughs> Yeah. But uh, we were out at the university to sort of demonstrate what went on in an office. Yeah. But not too many people were interested in, no. in what we were doing. I no, we were, we were running Jeffrey's office out mm. there, that just the two of us working on this caravan park project and uh, little else, I think. And, mm. and, and um, the flood hit and we went out in, in, in uh, trucks to yeah. help people at Corinda. <coughs> anyway. And how long were you no. in the tower to do the Oh, I don't know. A few months. A couple of months, yeah. yeah. But the students didn't pay any attention to you. They walked through. <laughs> they talk. He and Cinnamon used to come for chats. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can remember. He sent Patrice Daring to the CV because she was doing something that was influenced by Venturi and no one knew who Venturi was at the time. <laughs> I think Rex knows. <laughs> <laughs> At least you owned learning from Las Vegas. Yeah, I many did. people would have. No, it's got 1968 written on the inside. I pulled it down the other day. Mm. Really? So it was fairly new. And it was very small format. Mm -hmm. How how did Richard Baker and Wright get this project in Papua New Guinea? How did they? Was, was uh, it they were an old traditional firm. Bill Bill was a good. Um, uh, Bill mixed in society, so he knew the d Dean of Engineering out at the University of Queensland, and he'd done engineering buildings out at the University of Queensland, and that that Dean of Engineering was on, on the board up in Papua New Guinea setting up. It was a University of Technology, so they did... Uh, I worked on the Halls of Residence and, and an academic and communications building on, on the campus, and I also documented um, a building that Chris Hills designed uh, while he was there for extension to the admin building. Mm. Um, and were they also doing projects in Brisbane or Queensland at the time? Yeah, Bru Bruce was working on a, 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 a big hospital in Bethany, uh, in uh, Rockhampton. And Was it uh, the hospital that uh, Heath worked? Right? No, no. You, you, it's received very little publicity, but it was a unique project. A huge amount of effort went into it. Um, they they had the hospital hospital jobs all the way up the Queensland coast, and they, I worked on Gympie Base Hospital. They were, but but they, they were doing Meribara Base Hospital, Bundaberg Base Hospital. Hmm. Bill Goodso worked for Stevenson and Turner uh, for a while back in the thirties, and he also worked for that French engineer that uh, that, that Don Fashion. mentioned the other day that did those big Quonset huts hmm. out of tiny pieces of timber. Because I knew it was a French engineer, I just didn't know his name. Bill said, and and Bill also worked with the American architect who who, who um, worked on the Mec Metro Picture Theatres. Uh, he was brought out from America to do streamform for you know the Metro line. Yes, yes, they were streamformers, and and he died in the Stinson aircraft that crashed on the border ranges that Bernard O'Reilly found the couple of people who'd survived. So would he have also done the Regent Theatre or not? No, I don't think so. He did okay. brought that for the metro. Mm. Mm. Okay. The French engineer was Emile Trizet. Was it that? Guy? Whoever Don said the other day that did the uh, fourth assembly plant and the aircraft. Yeah. Um, yeah. And Bill Goodso worked for him. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Just <laughs> happened to say. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. And okay. And after Goodso Baker and Wild, you started your own practice. Yeah, nineteen seventy-eight. Mm -hmm. uh, I um. Uh, I. I tried to get a, 
I, I was going up to Papua New Guinea and, and supervising stuff up there and um, <coughs> and there was an opportunity to do a, a, a large um, hotel mm -hmm. in Lai and uh, I, I left the firm and I did that. Mm -hmm. mm. But this project you did? It never went ahead. In oh. the best traditions of hotel jobs, like I spent the whole of 1969 in Birrells, not going ahead. Uh, my, my, my version of it didn't go ahead, someone else's version. Oh. It was pinched by a, an engineering firm in Brisbane. But your uh, your own house you did when you were working at uh, a good sirs good sirs on Valpo, that was you had your own projects alongside or you just did your own house and, and I did my own house well, I, I asked I asked Ken if I could use uh, their 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 letterhead on on the on the submission to council because I I said I thought it might have more gravitas than <laughs> <laughs> than mine he said yeah you can use it but it won't mean anything <laughs> but you didn't have any trouble did you with council no no. 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 But, but I thought it was, I, I thought they might think it was a bit weird. Mm. And it was weird. That it was your house and that the no, name of No, the, 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 I mean, uh, I had a model. Project. Yeah, um, I had a model for it in, mm -hmm. uh, sitting on my desk at Good Sirs and, and one of the more conservative guys in there say, saying, you, you're extending a house. Because <laughs> it looked like it had been chopped. <laughs> uh, uh, it was... Uh, a house like no other at that time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you were drawing on things that other people probably hadn't seen. Yeah. I, I mean, uh, it's just that uh, the, the generation before us in Brisbane were all um, uh, still working in the first throes of the modern movement. I know people think they're modernist architects now, but it's sort of come back as a retro style now rather than a, mm. a conviction. Mm. These people had moral convictions in those days that they were pushing the, the, co the good cause forward. You know, yeah. Modernism was the medicine you had to take. <laughs> I mean, Jeffrey, you have had that idea with... Jeffrey, uh, Jeffrey and, uh, and Gibson and all, all those people... Noel were, Robinson picked it up. Yeah, the, but but they they had the, the uh, um, it was a particular brand of uh, of modernism that that sort of worked backwards from minimal lines. So you, you you'd sort of say the ceiling and the suffete had to be like that, and the glass had to enter it, and then you did all the complex detailing up in that part of the uh, the roof to make sure that those things happened. It was a sort of um, it, it, it it was driven by an abstract idea about uh, planes meeting that I didn't subscribe to. It was it, it didn't acknowledge that the building had fabric that um, you should work with. But on the other hand, it was an abstract idea. It, it also drew on the traditions that were all around us in that in the way that you put it together. This no, this was oh, together, yes. like a traditional house that might have been around. Well, when I was in England, years earlier. when I was in England, Russell sent me some slides that made me homesick. Apart from seeing that bad movie Cisco Pike, uh, I, <laughs> I, uh, because I've seen it since and it's embarrassing, so I wouldn't recommend it <laughs> that you see it. But 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 it was just the background that mm. I was looking at. Uh, uh, it was all about drugs. But but, but uh, Russell sent slides, and Russell grew up on a farm outside Ipswich, mm -hmm. and you know it, it was just a lot of country slides, and it just it, there was a physicality about it. I mean, I can remember coming back here, and uh, you've worn an overcoat for eighteen months or something or other, and you just shed all this stuff and jumped into the ocean. It was just exhilarating. <laughs> uh, well, I can remember when I came back and. You driving me around the suburbs of, um, well, St. Lucia and uh, these places where there's just so much vegetation and so many yes. smells. Oh, and, yeah. And it's, you just knew you were somewhere else. Yes, that's right. It was just mm -hmm. so different to Ura. Yeah. And therefore, the architecture that existed in these places needed to be very different. Mm. And it was. But we had a, uh, had a good tradition here. That, uh, um, um, uh, an idiosyncratic way of building that um, uh, I thought we could carry forward and, and I thought that's what Gino Valley was doing over in Italy I thought he was working with the tools to hand and, uh, and uh, he wasn't producing you know 
who says Corb's got the answer to everything? I mean, mm. but but that's what people thought at the time, yeah. didn't they? Well, and they had thought that um, years earlier. Perhaps yeah. by then they were questioning mm. what it was yeah. all about. Uh, and and so um, yeah. That, that, but this that notion that uh, that Queensland had a particular style of building—that's something that you got to realize in the UK. Or is this something that yeah. was already happening while you were here? No. No. no, I was just learning design skills when I was a student. You didn't, because I think it was in 1967 that Richard Stringer did this Queensland background exhibit on the Queensland house and was trying to make people look at... Oh, look, I thought the, the houses were fine, but I think if you looked at my student work, you wouldn't see any particular influence. Mm -hmm. um, well, I, I think as a student, you're just learning abstract skills about how to organise things. Mm -hmm. and, um, but after you'd been in Europe, you consciously yeah. used to study this by taking beautiful photographs of Brisbane yeah. bits that you thought you could use yeah. or that you just loved. Yeah. And you did that with a purity <laughs> that no one else did. Well, I've got a wall full of slides over there. Yeah. All those. Um, and, uh, and then I guess you see it later in your, um, in your artwork. Yeah, you know, you're you're celebrating these places. But even but even in in in, in the I had to produce some some drawings to, mm -hmm. to graduate at the AA, mm -hmm. and um, I, 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 one of the one of the drawings was a su suburban scene, um, and they're all they're all craftsman houses as they call them in America. It was in a suburb called Echo Park in Los Angeles. I'd never been to, but it looked like looked like a better version of Ashgrove to me. <laughs> <laughs> Would you call that a garden suburb or not? Yeah, 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 yeah. It was it was a it, it was a suburb of craftsman houses that uh, I did awful things to uh, at um, at the AA. But really, I was more interested in the houses than than the stuff that I did on their front front lawns, you know. Um, but I, I I didn't know at the time. But um, I guess. The, the, the hard question here is, is about um, which buildings constructed in Queensland between 45 and 75 do you consider significant, either personally or generally? Now, how do you respond to that? I mean, you've mentioned the people that you liked, mm. but is there a building that really fits that bill? Well... I mean, I, th I think those Birrell buildings are, are, are interesting buildings, but they're not specifically important to me, I guess. Although I do show, as I say in that, in that mm. talk there, I do show people from overseas his buildings. Mm. Um, but, but, but that's at a more abstract level. Um, well, I used to take people... I mean, uh, 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 when, when Brisbane was, was more palatable, when it... When it, when it <coughs> it's been interfered with a fair bit mm -hmm. in, in my eyes, not maybe not in yours. Mm -hmm. I used to take them through the suburbs, just up and down over the hills around mm -hmm. Tawong, and show them all, 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 all the houses that just not not one is is particularly interesting, but 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 in, in Toto they are the way they 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 spread over the over the landscape. They have knocked buildings down that I considered interesting. You know mm -hmm. the uh, the old picture theatre at Annerley. Uh, was much more, yeah. I think that's a more interesting building than the Treasury Building that it, all the architects got their knickers in a knot about in in the middle of town. The, the Treasury Building is just, I mean, it, it, I suppose it's important for, for the history of Brisbane, but it's just another tug in the forelock sort of mm. building, not nondescript building in in some out of the way part of the British Empire that mm. <laughs> got built, isn't it? It is to me, whereas that couldn't be anywhere else. Mm. Um, and it's three-dimensionally interesting. It's built on, it, it, it's a theatre that's built on a hill with a two-way sloping roof, mm. gable running up the hill. That, that's a really inventive way <laughs> to make a picture theatre. Um, uh, and faces the street in a sort, a sort of traditional way. Well, looking at uh, this book and being a bit of an outsider, I noticed that you always put a lot of thought to roof structures in your project or it seems like you always oh yeah 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 is that something you're conscious of while doing well, or roof geometry mm. rather than structure mm. maybe yeah. geometry yes yeah well one, one of the things about working in in, in lay in papua new guinea which is where all my 
well, I've done work in the Highlands as well, but in, in, in uh, it's got four times the rainfall of Brisbane and it's tropical and, and, and it's hotter and it's more humid. So if things are gonna fail, they fail very quickly. Mm. <laughs> so any, any um, uh, vanities you might have to work out on your buildings mm. are quickly called to account because they just fail. Mm. I mean, mold grows over everything and if it's gonna leak, it'll leak instantly because it, it, it rains like there's fire hoses coming vertically down from heaven, you know. <laughs> And so a good roof seems like a good start. Yeah. <laughs> but Papua New Guinea was like, like the, 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 an advanced version of the building experimental station. Remember they used to have that thing, you know, where they, they'd put yeah. building materials to a test. Yeah. And it, it used to happen down in Melbourne. It was a part of the CSIRO, I think. And, and you, they'd make codes for, for the use of materials. But in, in PNG, it was like that every day. Everything was being tested to destruction. <laughs> and so... You, it, it, well, it was not only the rain, it was also um, the tremors that happened. They had earthquakes. You had regular earthquakes. And, uh, and, and, but, but the rain was the significant thing. Yeah. And, and, um, and so if it was going to fail, it failed quickly. So I just, you know... I didn't think the modern movement had much to tell Papua New Guineans who already had a, an interesting way of building themselves. They had beautiful traditional buildings. And so what do you do in a country like that? You know, oh, I had the five points of modern architecture, the open plan, the, the, the curtain wall, the, you know. It's a, it doesn't mean anything. Um, and so it, w it was a good place to, uh, to do a lot of building early in my, my life. And, and yes, you did a lot of building. Yeah. Yeah, I did a lot of building, I, 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 and, and a lot more than it, it gave me much more than Brisbane ever did. Yeah. And uh, so, uh, was when you were studying at UQ, was there this tradition of looking at the own heritage of Queensland buildings? No, or not at all. No, not at all. Yeah. Um, uh, well, let's see. Um, when uh, when I was in first year, um, Bill Carr would be very big on Japanese houses, mm -hmm. which had a sort of integrity, which you can understand. And there was one built in New Farm, wasn't there? It was. Mm -hmm. And it was taken up to North Queensland, yes. wasn't it? And Bill knew about that. And because we knew we'd get good marks mm -hmm. if we did a Japanese house, we all did Japanese houses and Japanese type houses or something like that. You know, and that, I, I suppose that was in a way quasi related to what was going. No one made the leap of saying, "Hang on, Bill, uh, I know there aren't any hardback books on on Queensland houses, but there are. You know, there, 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 there's a way of uh, that things are put together here that um, uh, is interesting as well. But uh, they they weren't around at the time. Um, and by the time you got back from London. Did you notice that there was an increase in this uh, attention for the local, or did that still no. happen much later? Much later, I would say, wouldn't you? Well, there was um, in that time in the Theo Peterson era where conservation started right. to um, be raised as an issue. And yeah. There were demonstrations against knocking buildings down. Yes, mm -hmm. and friends were working in heritage areas that that. that uh, heightened your awareness of, of, of the older buildings. And I guess that really happened around 74 is my recollection of it. I don't when did they knock the Bellevue down? Yeah. 74. Mm. Yeah. Well, uh, and then Cloudland, you know, happened in 82. Cloudland. And so there were people sort of recognizing and trying to struggle, well, what, what is it that we want to preserve? You know, that, that was a new yeah. kind of thinking that uh, other but places had done it much earlier. Yeah. But I, I, I mean, I d Bob and Dick Allen and, and Don all, all got heavily involved in heritage work and I, I, I didn't, as it turned out. I just, I, I just whilst I liked the old buildings, I, I, I didn't concentrate my skills on the old, uh, on, on, on their, their um, 
techniques I, I was just interested in taking the conversation further mm. forward um, but they didn't influence you or, or oh yeah very specific uh, examples did I mean you didn't take everything you took what you needed from places and you got something together. In, you got something in mind <laughs> <laughs> well that was the first thing yeah. I was in England when you did that and yeah. I I was um, well I thought it was an important building yeah very nice I still do and it's gone through stages and it grew and I've worked in it and I've been mm. in it and mm. I know it well mm. And you know your practice has just continued, and you've been refining that whole idea that you started off with, um, and it's gone a long way beyond that. Yeah, but I think I think that uh, it represents a sort of misreading of today's world. You know, I think. Um, well, maybe it is. It's not. It's not a very good fit for today's world. It's a different world now. Mm. But it was a building of its time, or, yeah. or perhaps before. Oh yeah, time. I'm not running away from it, and no, I mean I'm still interested. I, I mean I'm interested in doing things a certain way. It's just that I don't think um, capitalism in its current form mm. is interested in that. But you know, come the, uh, uh, the ship's quietly going down, <laughs> 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 and I think we should be less greedy. And I think there are important messages in these buildings still that, um, uh, and we should be learn to be living with less. And you know, yeah, you, you've already um, answered this one, but it says name the architects, international or local, from any period that have had a formative influence on your architectural outlook. Are there any others you want to include? You've got for, for internationally or locally. Oh. Uh, uh, well, I think I... Well, I thought I understood what Gino Valley was on about. Um, I don't know. That I, I, I'm not too aware of a lot of his work. I suppose we could look at your library and see what books on architecture you bought. Oh, <laughs> heaps on Frank Lloyd Wright. Oh, really? Yes. Mm. Um, but that was I, when you were a student or later on? All, all, all eras mm. from second year on. Mm. He come, he's, a, he's a continuing thread in my life. Mm. I mean, I think he was probably a pretty miserable person, but I think he had a, 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 an incredible ability, um, a very resilient character. Um, uh, uh, I don't know where you start. I mean, the, the prairie stuff rose out of the arts and crafts movement, um, but then he ha uh, he tried to reinvent himself through the twenties when his life was in turmoil. Um, uh, he um, when he's on song, the, the the design resolutions grow out of the materials he's using. It's almost he he, he likes to describe the work that the work is organic, and I think. You know, some some of the buildings almost have a DNA. Mm -hmm. um, there, there's a way for them to propagate themselves forward, and, and they do. And, and, and uh, yeah, but the late work is pretty senile, and, 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 and I, I'm not too attached to that. You know, the Guggenheim and all that mm -hmm. stuff is is a bit wacky. But um, you know, the, the Usonian house mm -hmm. period is, is fantastic, mm -hmm. and, and, and uh, I've been to see quite a few of them. I've been to see my favourite one. Here's a good story. Um, uh, I, I didn't. I, I was standing on the footpath outside the second Jacob's house, um, the, the, the the curved one that that, that that looks to the south in the northern hemisphere, and and uh, you can't see it. And I, I I'm not I'm not uh, very pushy, so I don't go and knock on the door and say I, I, I'm an architect from overseas. I must see your house. <laughs> I'm no good at that. Um, but the second time, uh, I've I visited America twice in recent years. And the second, for the second visit, I, I did a bit of research and found out who owned it. Right. And, and I emailed her. So technology's moved on and you can send email yeah. <laughs> and get instant, instant mm -hmm. feedback. And so uh, I ingratiated myself with them and, and visited it. And um, I was so thrilled to be there that I'd forgot I'd taken them a, a, 
uh, I'd made a little lino cut print of banana trees that I'm fond of and I was going to give it to her as a token of my appreciation. Mm. I forgot. And so uh, when I got back home, I wrote her a letter and sent it off to her saying, look, I don't care if it sits in the bottom of your drawer in the study. I'm just happy for it to live in your house. And she said, oh, no, 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 we really like it. Um, they're chemistry professors, he and she, mm. John and Betty. And uh, she had it framed and she photographed it and sent me to her. So I've got, I've got, I've got a, a, a print of banana trees on, on the best Frank Lloyd Wright stuff. <laughs> you know, most people think Falling Water, Falling Water is a show-off house. Mm. And it's certainly virtuoso show-off. I've been there, but, 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 but the stream of ordinary houses is what I like. And, and, and this is, this is I think, about the best of them. Yeah. And uh, I've got a picture hanging on the wall. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, what about um, California itself? I mean, did that uh, have this any is, lessons This is in you? Wisconsin. No, but mm -hmm. I know uh, that. But, um, um, California, uh, mm. Los Angeles. Yeah. Oh, well, it, it is physically a bit like Brisbane, although yeah. Los Angeles is an irrigated desert, actually. Mm. You've been there? Yes. Yeah. Well, <laughs> it, I mean, I mean it's, it's not water flowing; it's just desert, isn't it? I mean, and and uh, I mean, it, 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 the the suburban developments. I've been to Pasadena; that's fantastic. Uh, the the um, I mean, green and green work is, is interesting, and I, I I used a green and green detail. One of my Papua New Guinean buildings. Remember the 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 uh, I, I can show you. The, uh, <coughs> sorry to leave the camera. No worries. Um, I've, I've still, still got the working detail. We used, uh, Bob, Bob, Bob came up and helped me. I had hepatitis in Papua New Guinea. Mm -hmm. And, and, and I, I, I asked him to come up and help me. I didn't know how quickly I'd recover. And we worked on this building for a coffee board and they had circular columns. And this is a green and green detail. The, the columns eventually uh, eventually uh, crack mm. like, yeah. uh, vertically and in order to allay the client's fears about the cracks that will inevitably happen in the, in the circular columns yeah. we, we use these opposing uh, opposing wedge things and uh, after after the timber dries you go around and drive the wedge and it tight, tightens Tightens. the strap and that's a, that's a green and green rip off from, from mm. Los Angeles <laughs> Uh, but not many people were looking at those craftsman buildings in those days, were they? No. Well, they were looking at Macintosh in Scotland. Yeah, 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 yeah. And you did too. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And Sterling. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, uh, but, but, but when, you, when, when you get to Pasadena, the, the Heinemann brothers, who weren't actually qualified architects, were so good as builders that they, they induced them to join the institute. <laughs> 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 and th they did really humble little little housing courts and things that are fantastic to oh. see. Yeah. yeah. Well, they are, uh, they're in the li my my library. Oh, Still loading. Well, the the whole craftsman movement, craftsman houses throughout the states were propagated out here too. That's why Ashgrove looked like Echo Park because we we got the magazines at the turn mm. of the last century. Um, by Gustav Stickley and these people that, 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 that propagated the building as a type. Mm. And, uh, well, um, there's only a few questions left here. But did he ask a question which one of your projects is your favourite? Well, your buildings? Did my building? Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's a bit hard. I, I, I mean, if you go to my website, the, the thing that's called recent work, mm -hmm. uh, they, they're all related building buildings that, that that show a pretty similar world view mm -hmm. i think so there is not one that you would uh, no. single out no yeah, i don't know my studio back in turinga mm. was pretty good mm. i think yeah and recognized as such yeah but um while you were up in papua new guinea you produced a design for the competition for Parliament House, which you walked past when yes. you came in. Yeah, so that was um, that was, that was a huge undertaking for a two-person office. That's right. Mm. Dennis made the model, and I did all the drawings. The drawings are still there in, in rolls there oh. on AO 
happening. And, and you try working on an AO sheet of paper in, in the tropics. It, <laughs> it grows this much. <laughs> um, anyway, um, it was very good working on the Canberra Parliament House. Uh, I, I say I came 11th, I don't know, where, 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 I mean, three or 400 people, uh, three or 400 firms mm -hmm. entered and 10 were premiated. So yeah. the, <laughs> <laughs> but I knew one of the judges, uh, not, not at the time, but later, and he, 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 he had remembered the work and, and liked it and he liked the coffee board building. Paul Reid, a fellow who, who was one of the judges there, uh, previous head architect of NCDC. Um, but it was so humongous that, that, that um, when the competition for Darwin Parliament House came along a few years later when I came back to Brisbane, it was like doing a doll's house by comparison. And I did a better building for that, and I've still got the model for that, which mm -hmm. you walked past as well, and I came second in that. Mm -hmm. Now, there's two, two, two items of regret. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I th Philip Cox came first, Cox's office came first, and I think it was a worse building. Uh, it, it was not a resolved thing, but I think they gave him the job politically because he'd, he had work in the Northern Territory and he has a big office, which mm. was a very disappointing Australian outcome for, you know, it's mm. just not adventurous. And, and second of all, because it's in Darwin, they're cowboys up there anyway, and they didn't build that, they built just Warren Anderson's one from the bottom drawer, just a, a, an entrepreneurial builder who had, who 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 would have gone to the, da, the the Parliament in Darwin and said I can do it cheaper, and so he did, mm. and so that's how things happen in the frontier, but but I I, I did learn um, through Patrick Bingham Hall who, who who was talking to one of the judges at Darwin. Oh yes, Rex did the best scheme, but we gave it to Cox because. Yeah, and you could see that, that it, it wasn't, I mean, Cox would have been better, uh, capable of a better building. It wasn't, mm. I, I'm not a fan of Cox's work, but this, but this was far from mm. the best of his work. <laughs> mm. <laughs> he just dashed it out and that. Well, maybe someone else did. That. That's right, someone from his office mm. did. Uh, whereas mine, mine was actually, uh, I'd still stand by mm. that building. Whereas when I was doing the Parliament House in Canberra, it was a mm. good organisational idea. Mm. but it wasn't mine in any particular building way. It was a good organisational solution to the hill. Mm. Uh, whereas Darwin was a good organisational solution and it was my building and I liked it mm. and it was would have been a good building. In the city, in that yeah. city. Yeah, yeah, oh. it would have. Yeah. Well, was there any significant architects who'd worked for you? Oh, lots of people. In your office? Oh, lots of people. <laughs> you worked there. <laughs> I'd be a bit remiss if I didn't say. Uh, well, I only worked there for a very short time. Oh, a couple of periods. PNG and then Camber. Uh, yeah. Um, you don't want me to go through all the people? Well, I mean, Dennis Formiati yeah. w w w was... Um, came and worked with me in Papua New Guinea. He was terrific. He was a student I thought was pretty bright and it was, it was his year out. And he worked up there and then when I came back to Brisbane, he worked in my office again. He was, he, he, he's, he's a gifted designer and he's doing, he's doing small construction work with a partner down in Canberra. So yeah. it's interesting. Yeah, but he, he understood what you were on about yeah. and he just picked it up and yeah. helped. Yeah, and he worked, worked in Dick Allen's office. Did he work in your office? No. No. But he worked in Dick's office, and mm. yeah. Uh, Peter Skinner worked in my office. Um, but you kept the office small. I mean, it wasn't Michael like you. S Michael Scott worked there for a while. Um, you know, lots of people. Mm -hmm. I, I, I kept the, I mean, the office was as big as it needed to be. I'd, I had four, uh, for those days, it was four pretty large sized jobs in a row in Canberra, four four million dollar projects in a row through the 80s and into the 90s and uh, that kept the staff rolling along and yeah. kept the professional indemnity premiums high. And Let's <laughs> <laughs> so how many people did you have oh, maybe at the most? Wouldn't have been more than 10 mm. at 
bread house. We had packed a few in there, mm. but it wouldn't never have been. <coughs> then I had it. Mm. It's hard. It, well, Bob will tell you that it's hard to know how to structure a, a, a practice over time. And I had a couple of unsuccessful partnerships. That mm. Yeah. Well, that's always the hardest bit. Is how yeah. do you? I didn't know how to shed the load. Yeah, that's right. And I wanted to keep my finger on the pulse. Mm. And you did. Yeah, but you know. You probably learned that from Frosty. <laughs> I didn't learn <laughs> anything from Frosty. <laughs> Bob is much more uh, uh, interested in Keith Frost than I am. I just had that one bruising experience that's mm. documented in there. Um, well, do you think that your practice has had any, any impact on present day architecture in no. Queensland? No. No. Okay. No? I think others would disagree. Yes. But, um, well, show me what. Ah, well, that's harder. But well, that's you, what you're asking. You then. influenced a lot of people, and I suppose. But I think the the conversations moved on. I don't know why it makes that mark. Don't worry about it. Um, you know, I think Peter, people like Peter Roy, who went on to do quite a a lot of work publicly, hmm. um, was very much influenced by you. Well, I was hoping Peter would be a partner at one stage, but life didn't go that way. Mm. Um, I mean, Libby Watson Brown, I think, was influenced by you, and I don't know how long she worked in the office. She didn't. Well, well she worked for me when I was in your office, so she was there. Um, oh. That was my memory of it, because she was working on my projects when I was working in your office. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. It all becomes a bit. Mm -hmm. um, no, I, I, I think that, you know, I think my generation um, didn't do too well in public works in Queensland. They missed out but I think for whatever reason. I went, I went in to try to hawk my wares in, 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 in public works to try to get a decent public commission. I didn't get one. Uh, people like Gary May were in charge there, and they, they, he was a guy in my year, and they just weren't weren't adventurous. Whereas younger firms like Donovan Hill have, have done very well through the public sector and uh, and otherwise. Um, somehow it wasn't. I mean, we can get onto a philosophical discussion about where the work's going. I just see it as more interested in international design mm. trends than in producing local product. But I think, well, I don't think that question should be taken too literally. I think your office, seeing it as an outsider, had an influence in, in the way you kind of reinvented a bit of the local building tradition and made it modern. I don't want to use the word modern. But yeah, no, no, no. But, but, but I think that's what, you know, I, I went to Malaysia uh, a couple of years ago and you go and, and you're driving up. And you see the work that the young English architects were doing for ordinary buildings, for barracks and, and meeting halls and things. And I really admire it because mm. these people were trained in offices. Uh, they didn't have a, an idea. That they didn't have an idea that design was something precious that you popped a smock on and had a had a metaphorical idea about. It was taking a way of making buildings forward. I think they probably came out to the empire, or as it was then, made a few stupid mistakes and figured out how to do things within a, a tradition of building, mm -hmm. and, and, and they did it. And I think they're terrific buildings. And I, I just thought that I was doing similar things here. But I, I, think, I think that, you know, it's too complex now. I, I, the, uh, Capitalism mm. is, is, is a tricky paradigm. That's the only one in existence in the world now. Mm. Communism's gone down the chute. Uh, and so, you know, people are, are, are interested in, in greediness now, mm. I think. And um, when they, when, you know, when things become more dire, perhaps, um, I don't know. It, it's, just, it, it's just tricky. It, it, I, I, there are too many many I heard, heard an expression the other day um, 
there's too much stuff. I'm, I'm dying of stuffocation. <laughs> 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 Have you read that one? No, I thought it was pretty good. Um, it's very hard, you know, they're, they're new building products, for instance, every every couple of months, and they're not tested, and they'll fall off the market quickly. And But do you, I wouldn't think that I even needed to know about them. I, I mean, don't, I just, I don't. I just distrust you, them. Yes, but, but you're reg regarded as some antediluvian sort of... Uh, Unless, unless it's a technical breakthrough in something that, you know, well, you well, that's right. Fireproof um, something in a way that you couldn't do before. I mean, it's not to say that it's not to say that I, I, I'm I'm not interested. Um, this is this is the way uh, houses used to be put together, mm. um, and after the war, after 1945, this was how they had to be put together because there were. Um, there's a book around here. Yeah, here, here it is. That's just a page from the Commonwealth, Commonwealth uh, Savings Bank uh, housing, housing loans. So uh, after the war, um, there, you could uh, uh, bricks became available, and Gabriel Pearl, another Queensland architect, describes brick veneer as expensive paint, <laughs> 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 which is pretty accurate. But but this became before the war. This was ubiquitous. Mm. After the war, this this is ubiquitous all over Australia. Mm. Uh, th this is ubiquitous in Queensland only. Yes. And then suddenly in Australia everywhere because yes. the finance people produce and, 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 and this is, uh, I, I tried to produce a third section in this just um, when I was doing work for the Centre for Subtropical Design mm -hmm. and I, I used all the new age timber products. I mean, uh, I, I don't, uh, I'm not quite sure how, how how they'll stand the test of time, but trying to use current technology to take that conversation, mm -hmm. bypassing that, yes. and taking it further forward. Mm. Uh, I think that's where the game is, or that's what I'm interested in. But I don't think there are commissions out there for it. You know, mm -hmm. I, I, I had a, I had a mining company ring me up, and suddenly, um, you know. Uh, Yes, yes, we're on, we're on with this, and, and and then you hear nothing from them for three months, and then they ring you up and say it's got to be done by yesterday, and I, I just say get stuck. Mm. Um, it, it, uh, may, maybe if I was a huge organisation, maybe it was Conrad and Gaga that I could respond, but but I, I think these people scrub the floors. You, you know, Gina Reinhardt comes in and just says, you know, I've got money, do it, mm. and and they're not really committed to to doing it. Whereas if there was some forethought. I mean, the, 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 the top, the, because we've only got a small population, the, the top building we can produce in Australia uh, with any forethought is the Titan Shed. That's all we bring to the table. You know, you've seen the ads on TV, the, those, mm -hmm. the, the sheds that everyone thinks are invisible if, the, if they're green colour bonds, you mm -hmm. know. They're, they've got no eaves and they're, they're, they're just tin. But you go, yeah, uh, you know, on, on one of those, those Kevin, what, what's his name? The guy who does the, the, the building design project uh, show on TV, Kevy, Kevin McLeod. McLeod. Mm -hmm. My favourite one of those was this older couple ordered a, a prefab German house. And it was just so schmick you wouldn't believe it. it, 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 it it's like a BMW house, you know. And, and they all, the whole house is, is done and all the tradesmen come to England and they're all there and they're working like clockwork and the one thing that holds them up is that the English crane driver can't find the site. <laughs> Other than that, the whole thing goes together like that. And it's a really sophisticated product, but all we can produce here in Australia is, is the Titan shed. You know, mm. it's numbers. It's numbers. They've got markets. Mm. Well, well, there's one more question. <laughs> Sorry, I'm de I'm no, depressing. No, no, no. <laughs> I'm depressing you. Very young person. Um, <laughs> Post seventy five. Are there any buildings constructed in Queensland that post you... Post 75. Post 75. Mm. Any buildings constructed in Queensland that you consider significant? Oh. Yeah. Mm. 
this is the time of your practice oh. when other people were building things as well as you there must have been something there that you thought was okay maybe it's a Bruce Goodson or maybe it's a, one of yours oh well I mean Bruce one of Don's yeah one of Don's um, Don's a good friend of mine <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you've met him, spoken to him? Yes. Hmm. Um, oh well, we can come back to that. <laughs> uh, what, 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 do, you mean, do you mean an institutional building, a major well, institutional Don, building? Don did a lot of um, tight building. Yeah, I'm not too familiar with a lot of them. Um, it doesn't have to be an institutional building, it can also be a house, it could be for nothing. Well, I did my best, but but you know, um, uh, Bruce went. And Bruce Goodson went to Tasmania, mm -hmm. so I saw him in Queensland. He, he did a few. He did um, early hippie houses up in yeah. Mount, Mount Meebo. And I'd never really seen them. I've seen a few blurry oh, photographs. No, they're quirky. Hmm. You know, they're sweet and quirky. <laughs> <laughs> I know them. Uh, well, what about Russell's work? Russell's work, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, um, I got, um, that that uh, that print up there on the wall. Um, Architecture Australia asked me to produce something that commemorate a hundred years of publishing architecture, and and, uh, and 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 all of those buildings are in Queensland, uh, and they cover a hundred year period, and uh, uh, as as well spaced as I could get out. The top one's a Dodds. The second one is a Craftsman House over in Green Slopes that's been demolished. So is the Dodds House. The uh, we should hold it up. Mm -hmm. That's a Dodds House. That's Dodds own house that was demolished for a, a block of Shonky units in the New Farm. That's the Craftsman House that was built in um, Green Slopes that's been demolished. Not unlike the um, Heinemann brothers that mm -hmm. I was talking about. Mm -hmm. This is Eddie Oribin's studio in Cairns, mm -hmm. done in the 50s, late 50s, early 60s. Uh, that, that's Russell Hall's house on Camp Island, just off the coast mm -hmm. of Queensland in Balham. Mm -hmm. And that's a house that I did in um, Brookfield. Mm. So um, those yeah. are the ones that I picked out <laughs> because I wanted a, a personal right. connection to them all. Yeah, yeah that's a good answer to that question yeah. it is mm -hmm. <laughs> i mean it's the best answer mm -hmm. we've ever had have you reached the end of your your uh, digital I, life or i think so yeah. <laughs> we're nearing the end of uh, of our, our tape so unless you have another question well Robin? the the story that you told At before we turned yes. on the tape. Perhaps we could get you to yes. repeat it. Uh, oh, it was about a house I did in Gundawindi while I was working for Goods of Baker Wild, and um, it's in this book. It, it, it was done for a wheat farmer at Gundawindi who was in his 50s at the time, and I thought that was pretty old. I was in my 20s, I'm now in my 60s. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but he, he, he an important house, ipso facto, for him was a brick house, and no amount of talking could convince him otherwise, even though the soil out there was very volatile, it was expansive black soil, and it's very difficult to build masonry houses on the black soil, mm -hmm. because they develop cracks everywhere. But in order for the, th the, the house not to move, we drilled the foundations down you know, 15 feet at the time, uh, I guess we, oh, it might have been in, in metric, it was on the cusp of changing from metric to <coughs> imperial to metric. That they went down 15 or 20 feet and they bailed out. And it cost the house cost 100, 150,000, which was a lot in the late 70s. What did your house cost at that time? About 10, <laughs> something <laughs> like that. 15 yeah. times. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, and, 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 and so. Um, but it cost 50000 to get to ground level, is what I'm saying. The mm. foundation, a third of the money was poured in the ground <laughs> because he wanted bricks. Yes. Okay. Uh, and so we gave him a brick front, and it was largely timber elsewhere. And, and, and um, I had an elaborate chimney 
because it gets cold out, kind of windy. Uh, and the, the chimney uh, corbelled in two directions out of the wall and became freestanding. As a, a, it was a brick chimney. A brick chimney and a brick fireplace. And um, I detailed it all. And um, I, I used to go out on the site, but the brick layout was there one weekend when I wasn't there and was breathing in the client's ear. The client had not had confidence in me to date because I was in my 20s and I had longish hair for the era. And and it was a conservative firm I was working for and he was hoping to get one of the senior partners mm. rather than a young buck. So so uh, this he rang, rang me up on the weekend and said, the bricklayer said that um, uh, the chimney is going to fall down if he builds it like this. And I, I could remember Bill Goodsir, who was the senior partner in the firm, being a fairly combative character, uh, using this expression. I said, it won't fall down. I was confident it wouldn't fall down because I've worked, I've worked through it with Les Adjet, the engineer. And, and, and I said, if, and if, you cha if he changes anything, I'll give you a written guarantee, which was Bill's expression, that it'll smoke the house out. <laughs> and there was silence on the other end of the phone. And, and um, uh, he said, oh, okay. And he went, went off and, to and read, the, read the riot act to the bricklayer and the bricklayer got on with it. Anyway, months later, it was finished. Uh, the house was finished and uh, we were driving through Gundawindi on our way to Canberra and we called in and there'd been a, a big function in town, a rodeo or Jim Carter, call it what you like. And all the people from the town were back and the fire was going and it was drawing perfectly and Paul uh, <laughs> hit, the, hit the glass and stopped everyone talking and told them this story because it had obviously changed his 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 opinion of me. Mm -hmm. And and Rex said that um, it wouldn't fall down and that it, he'd give me a written guarantee that it would smoke the house out of if he changed anything. And I thought, I'd rather the bloody thing fell down than <laughs> smoke the house out. <laughs> and as you can all see, it hasn't fallen down and it worked. So it was good. It must have been the highlight of your career. It's just about the best story from my <laughs> career, yeah. Um, a that's, win. That's a nice ending to our recording of this. Thank you. Okay. Yep. <laughs>